A brand new update. I'm curious, will it win against competitors? I can already give you the answer. Nope. Anyway, today we're taking a look at what's new in Adobe Premiere Pro. Update 25.4. Number 1. Live waveform editing. So whenever you drag the volume line up or down, the waveforms will now respond to that. This also works when you're adding keyframes. The waveforms will look smaller when you decrease the gain of your audio clip. Now, there's one thing they forgot. I'm 99% sure that this was already introduced with the 25.2 update. That was in April. It was called Dynamic Waveforms back then. Anyway, it's a great feature, I gotta admit, it's been wonderful using the dynamic waveforms. But if you don't like this, you can turn it off by selecting view and right here you can toggle it on or off. I like it, so let's keep it on. Number 2. Editing faster with multi-transitions. So with the August update, you can now adjust the transitions of multiple clips in one move. You basically select them and you only have to click and drag one of them. This is useful, it really is. It also works with audio clips, but again, there's one thing that I miss. So when your clips are on a different audio or video track, this feature works perfectly fine. But once you want to add a transition to multiple clips on the same track, it won't work. Look, it works fine on different tracks, but again, as you can see, it doesn't work on the same track. My guess is that Adobe forgot this and they're gonna fix that. But yeah, the fact that it doesn't work this way kinda kills the purpose. Now, I have been bashing a lot on Premiere's keyframes, but apparently they fix them. I'll show you that in a second. If you guys have an update request or if there's something you want to get off your chest to Adobe, comment down below because Adobe will watch this video. Now, there is one thing that I can't edit without and that's the Storyblocks plugin. I can simply search for the B-roll I need, click the download button and boom, it will appear in my project panel. There's no need to leave Premiere. Unlimited downloads of diverse and high quality media for one predictable subscription cost. Storyblocks has everything you need in one place. 4K and HD video, templates and music and sound effects. It's like an unlimited source of content that gives you freedom to test, experiment and create more effective videos. I use it all the time to test new effects for my tutorials. And of course to enhance the story I'm telling you guys. You can choose for a monthly or annual plan, no hidden costs or extra fees. Now this is important to know. The stock library is constantly being refreshed with new content that feels authentic and is created by real artists, not by an AI. Everything you download is 100% royalty free, pre-licensed and ready to use. No need to worry about legal rights, copyright claims and all that stuff. You can get three extra months for free when you sign up for the annual plan so head over to storyblocks.com slash premiere basics to take advantage of this limited time offer or you can just click the link down below and now it's time for number three the keyframes yeah they claimed they have made improvements to the effect control panel that made keyframing more predictable i honestly don't know what they're talking about and if you do please let me know because i I do not notice anything. You know what I hoped for? That they did the same thing with the keyframes as they did with the multiple transitions. I mean, this is an awesome feature that should have been there a long time ago, but it still doesn't work with keyframes. We should be able to adjust the curves of multiple properties at the same time. Otherwise, what's the purpose? I know the purpose. If keyframes in Premiere don't work, we gotta use After Effects, which means more money for Adobe. Number four, a snappier timeline playback. Whether you're fine tuning a cut or navigating a dense timeline, stable thumbnails will help you stay oriented and confident in your edits. Zoom in or out with these scroll bars, toggle thumbnail modes and perform your usual edits with a smoother, snappier and more stable timeline experience, if they say so. Number five, new preferences for graphics. You can now automatically apply a chosen font when creating new text items or subtitled text. This is very nice. I'm really happy they added this. Oh, and same thing for closed captions, by the way. Number six, new hardware acceleration of 10-bit 422 media in both H.264 and HEVC codecs on NVIDIA Blackwell GPUs, which are the professional ones or the RDX 50 series, providing a great performance for formats that combine small file size and great quality. That's great. This basically means that Premiere has a smoother playback on compressed video files. If you have an RDX Pro or 50 series, by the way. So if you do, I would like you to test it out and let me know down below if it's true. Again, if you guys have an update request or if there's something you want to get off your chest, let Adobe know down below because they watch this video. Thank you so much for watching.